We have about 15 minutes before the end of the session, so would the presenters all come up here? So when there are questions, uh, we can pass the mic down to whoever wants to speak to that. While we're assembling, I thought maybe I'd make a few transitional comments, things that struck me as some commonalities in the presentations and also some differences. One commonality I saw, I didn't apply fully, was that uh, maybe with the exception of Jack's at the end, these were mainly discussions of uh, urban experiences of cities. Uh, and it's interesting if I understand correctly the background of the people who are here. I think only Johnny is a real city resident. Uh, Jack, you're a suburb of the big city. Uh, but That'd be interesting to know what your experience has been really coming into an urban experience from a less than urban background. Uh, one other thing I noted is that uh, for these uh, students, the experience they had of what seems to relate quite closely to their majors. Uh, that isn't always the case, but that seemed to be in this group. Another thing I noticed, uh, picking up on what Kevin said about surprise, that we heard surprise in a number of different ways. Uh, people were surprised by things they saw, things that happened to them. Uh, they were also surprised at how much change had gone on in them as a result of these experiences. And then one th further thing I heard was that these were hard experiences, maybe in varying degrees, not for everyone, but they were challenged, and that seemed to have a deep effect. It always wasn't just fun or easy. Uh, and the way of differences, one of the things I noticed is that if we can think of study abroad as a high impact experience, there were various things that were emphasized in these presentations. There was a lot on language, maybe that was pretty common, a lot on encounters with people, but there were references also to the impact of a homestay, of a work experience, of encounters with important historical places or high culture, or just uh, mastering the patterns of daily life. And so I think people emphasize the variety of ways in which study abroad experiences have a deep effect. Now, who would like to ask questions or make comments for any of these speakers? Should I just pass the microphone down the yeah, line if yeah. there are individual speakers here for you? Test, test? Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions or comments? And maybe I'll either try to repeat the thing in a brief way so that everyone can hear. Okay. Or Shay, how did you decide that this was the medium that you wanted to use? Thanks. Um, yeah, well, I'm a studio art major, um, so I'm very interested in um, art. And um, actually, I was just talking to Robin, um, who, who helps out with the ACM Chicago program, is one of the teachers. And um, we were talking about Linda Berry. And I don't know if anybody knows about Linda Berry, but she's an artist, and she's a creative writer, and a cartoonist, and um, a storyteller, and a scientist. and so. Uh, I, she was one of my favorite artists at the time, and still is, um, and she captures um, stories and narratives in a way um, that I don't think you can just capture in, at least I can't just capture in one image or one, one piece of writing. Um, and so I realized I needed more to tell the stories of the people that I had heard uh, or met, and, um, and I'd always been really interested in zines, and that there's something really tactile about them and, and creating something with your hands. Um, and so I think um, it just became the perfect way to, to tell my story um, about, about the way I had learned about Chicago and the people of Chicago, um, and specifically those who, who panhandle in Chicago. I hope that answers it. Yes? Um, I guess one question I had is that it seems like a common factor for uh, most of the panelists right now is that uh, while you were abroad and me 
me specifically as well. Like while you were abroad, uh, you were constantly being recognized as being a foreigner or being an American, uh, with the exception of, I guess, Johnny being from Senegal. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I guess, how did that impact your experience? Because I know for me personally as well, like when I was traveling around trying to practice my French and traveling, you know, people uh, just knew that I was an American. Like, how did that impact your experience? So the question is, how did the experience of being seen as an American or as a foreigner impact your experience? Anyone want to take that? I'll take Thank you. Great question, by the way. Um, when I first arrived in Senegal, I mean, of course, people of color everywhere, but I didn't know the language, nor did I know the cultural characteristics to embrace with the norms. So it was the first time in my life that I had ever been in a majority, but I was a minority, and I couldn't really articulate it. I mean, I was the only person of color, well, one of another person of color on, on my trip, but she was, we're, we were from different backgrounds. And the way I needed to understand my personal experience was to just to get away from the American kids and go and do everything on my own. And I mean, I got into so many, uh, an endless amount of fights with, with taxi drivers because they didn't know what I was saying. Because <laughs> I was trying to learn French and they were speaking Wolof. And I was like, what are you saying? And so at that particular point in time, I realized that I had to just, you know, sit back and listen. And as I began to listen, my identity began to change and I began to know how to pronounce a word so that they don't know that I wasn't an American. And so, yeah, those little strategies and tactics work like that. Okay. I can do it too. Yeah, I mean, so I went to Mali last winter, and it was like the opposite experience. I mean, that was the first time I was ever a minority, which was really weird. And got to the point where everyone in my group, we were pretty much all white, and we would sort of spot what Malians call a tubabu, which means white person, but also a Westerner. And you'd spot one like a mile away, and you'd be like, oh my god, what is he doing here? You know, and it was really, you know, we'd always find the Peace Corps people really quickly. And it was really weird, but so I guess, that was a really strange experience, and in there, I just sort of embraced it, and I was like, well, there's no way I can even remotely adapt. The only, I mean, the only thing I can do is just learn as much about this culture as possible, and I'd sit on my stoop and talk to my neighbors and drink tea all day, and that was sort of the way I handled it there. In Paris, you know, I was white, and I figured out kind of some fashion rules and started doing the scarf, and like, try and fit in, so like if I closed my mouth, they would usually think I was European. They, actually, they usually thought I was Italian, which I never got. Um, but like, basically we measured success, I think, if you could speak French to them and they would immediately speak French back to you, that was like, good. Because you know, like the second you say something, they're gonna be like, where are you from? And they may, if you could get it so they at least couldn't identify you as American, then I felt proud of myself just because I felt like I was integrating. But at some level, too, I realized to sort of just embrace the fact that I was a foreigner and that I could integrate as much as possible and learn about this culture, but at the same time know that I'm bringing my own things to the table and that's something of interest as well. So. Yes, I'll quickly go to you. So I'm a first generation American, my mom was born in Germany, so I thought, you know, studied abroad in Germany, I'd be perfect, everybody think I'd be German, I didn't have an accent. I had a horrible German accent, and that I didn't. <laughs> and like I thought that I totally fit in, but I mean, I was there obviously to perfect the language, and the minute, even before I opened up my mouth, they would automatically speak English to me, like, no, 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 I want to speak German. Like, this is why I'm here, and they just, I think it'd be really cool to be an American and they wanted to practice their English on me. So it took a while, just like what you said, to embrace the fact that I was a foreigner and the fact that you know, I had to be a little more patient because, I don't know, they, they thought it was cool to be an American, but it was cool to be German, so. <laughs> so, and talking about art specifically, I didn't really meant to talk about you know how I was uh, as a person, and I totally emphasize the feeling of being an American that everybody is talking about here. And I, at first, I was very concerned about being American and seeming like an American. But once you're, um, once you realize how people actually look like the architectural environment, you're like, they look like London art. I got this. Um, you start considering yourself as like some maybe I'm like a form of modern art in this museum. 
because you you are different and you stick out. But if you change to form to that culture, um, like being a chameleon type of style, where you just change yourself to fit into that museum, um, I, like I'm advocating adapting, a adapting to the situation that you're in, but also recognizing that you're adapting to something. I'll say really quick. Um, I think I would get a little bit because I actually loved it at first that I stood out. Um, it got, I got so much attention. I'd walk down the street and people's jaws would drop and they'd just watch me walk past. And they'd snap pictures as I walked past. I mean, I felt like a superstar. But then, you know, <laughs> as it wore on, I became more and more frustrated because I was trying so hard to integrate into this culture. And where I went, um, I was constantly identified as an outsider. So as it wore on, I got more and more frustrated. And then eventually came to terms with it. Um, I realized there's both good parts and bad parts uh, to it, and you had to learn to deal, have to deal with that. Um, so yeah, it's just something I had to come to terms with, and just accept both the good and the bad. Another question or comment? Yes? Yes, with the experience that you all took in from this uh, abroad, what will you take what will you, what, what have you gotten from it, and what will you take it, and what will you integrate it to, where, where you want it. So what are you taking away from it as an experiment, and what are you integrating it with? Um, what do you mean, like, in terms of professional, or as, like, a human being? <laughs> Both? Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, well, uh, um, as a person, I mean, like, it's, I've been to China before, so it wasn't a huge surprise. Um, but uh, what I, I think, what I got from it was, um, since China is developing so fast, it's really, it's literally like buildings are up and down, businesses are up and down every single day. And not too many countries go through this. Um, ever in their period, in, like, in their histories, um, you know, like uh, I mean, look at some countries in South America soon or like now, but uh, China's happening right now, and that's why I think like um, observing something like this, um, I think is extremely special um, uh, because it, there's only so many times you can see it in a century or in your lifetime, um, and. I think just that uh, that thrill, the knowledge of that, um, is kind of what I was chasing. Okay. Um, I mean, that's hard because I I think it you take so much from it. I you know, and I took really different things from my different programs and grew really differently in each one. I mean, I think Molly was the first time I'd ever left a Western sort of standard country that I visited, and that was totally life-changing and eye-opening just because it was so diverse and different and um, it also totally threw open the door for my wanderlust. I drive my mom crazy now because it's like any foreign country I like see them, I want to go to there. And she's just like, oh God, Mallory, no war zones, <laughs> like, you know. But I think, I think, I don't know, I guess ultimately I just know that I, Every time I go abroad, I figure out more both about the world that I'm living in and more types of people, and I feel like I can connect to more types of people because of that. But also, I learn more about myself and what's important to me. And I didn't talk about this at all, but I did change my major after Paris and actually totally changed my trajectory. I went to Paris, and I was like, I'm going to go spend all my time in museums, and I'm going to be an art history person, and that's going to be my thing. And I started writing in Paris and loving it, and now, like, my whole life track has literally shifted. My direction is totally not what it was at all. So I mean, I think it can be totally transformed on every level, uh, which it has been for me. But yeah, um, I'll just say quickly. Um, I learned that I'm vulnerable. I mean, I knew that before, but um, I came to Chicago and I actually was just recently in Chicago competing in Loud and Fall, which is a slam poetry competition here. And um, and I got off the Greyhound bus and um, and here I was like, oh yeah, I've lived in Chicago for four and a half months, you know, and I felt, and I traversed the city and you have all these assignments and so you have to go everywhere in the city and really get a feel for all of the types of people. And, um, and this man comes up to me 
and was like, oh, do you know where you're going? Like, because I must have just looked, you know, I had bags, and um, it's like, do you know where you're going? Like, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going, I'm going downtown, I'm going to this theater, like, I'm fine, thanks. Um, and then I get on the bus and I'm going the completely wrong direction. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I was, and I was also engaged in this conversation with this man about football, which I had no interest in. And, um, and I was like, I can't end this conversation, but I have to get off the bus. And I was like, oh, I felt like crying. I was like, what is wrong with me? I thought I knew the city. Like, I thought I knew myself. I, you know, I had this like complete, uh, I had really had to stop and assess, like, what did I learn from this program? And I realized that um, I am vulnerable and that you can learn from every situation you're in. And, um, and maybe that's what I bring to the table is that I have a lot of emotion and I have to always really think about, um, I think about the people that I'm with and think about um, the experience that I've had and how that can really shape the next experience that I've had. And so I really found myself in Chicago in the sense that I learned that I wanted to work with youth. Um, I learned about a lot of different perspectives and how I can contribute to those perspectives. Um, and I learned that I want to be a slam poet. And I learned that, you know, I learned so many things from this experience. Um, but I think, I think the biggest thing was that I'm vulnerable and that we can learn from every experience. So, um, yeah. One thing that that I took away from my experience in, in France and in the Dark Senegal learning African philosophy and such is that I felt cheated, in a sense, on the educational aspect. Because learning about France Fanon when I'm 21 and about all these other incredible African philosophers would have been great if I learned about them when I was 13. <laughs> it would have been incredible, monumental, transformative. And so, just consider, taking all that into consideration, I feel as though I have a social responsibility to invest in like my smaller cousin or my smaller siblings if I ever had smaller siblings, I'm the youngest. But just just take all just take all that just take all of that information and, and reinvest it because imagine okay, here I am, I learned it when I was twenty one, but just imagine how someone else's trajectory could change if they learned it when they were nine. It's it's like learning about the Martin Luther King of Africa in a sense. And it can be completely transformative. And in the latter part of your question, Dad. <laughs> no. <laughs> Where am I taking it from here? Um, I fought my hardest for the last year to try to become a teacher, a teacher for America in the Chicago land area because nothing would be more fulfilling in my life, but I would reject it. So now I'm going to be a high school English teacher in Las Vegas, and I think that in preparation for law school, reinvesting in youth will be an incredible experience as I prepare for the future. And I think our time is up. It's time for a break. Uh, let's express our appreciation to our presenters.